Good morning, Rocketeers. This week's lesson is How High Did My Rocket Fly? And it has some other practical applications as well. So the documents you're going to find in Google Docs or in uh, Google Classroom, there's one called a Tangent Angle Conversion Chart. If you can print it, great. If you can't, you can review it later. Uh, you can also find it anywhere on Google, too. You can still find those images. That's an easy chart to find. And a calculator that might be helpful, too, for some of your calculations. Okay? Hard to predict where our rocket is going to go. and uh, But in most cases, we can get a pretty good notion of how high it does go after we launch it. So let me start out with this example. How high is the tree next to my house? All right? True story. I had my little house here. I have a very large maple tree next to it. At least I had one, and it was rotten. And I need to know if that thing falls over or if they cut it down, is it going to hit my house? I mean, how tall is it? So I'm not going to climb the tree, and I'm not going to you know, get up there with a tape measure, drop the tape measure, and see how tall the tree is, and then compare it with how far away it is from my house. And then I can say, hey, it's going to hit my house or not. I can't do that. So I'm going to show you the method, same method for figuring out how high your rocket flies. We're going to have to measure this distance here, which I can do from the ground. And all I have to do is look up from here and measure the angle that that's at. With those two pieces of information, I'll be able to figure out if this tree is going to hit my house or not. So we'll come back to that later in this lesson. First thing we're going to need is the baseline. The baseline is really pretty simple. It's the distance between the launch pad of my rocket and the person with a clinometer. Big fancy uh, word for a simple device that works kind of like a protractor. Okay? Imagine if my eyeball could be right here at zero, or in the center of this device, and then look up at an angle and then actually see the rocket up in the sky. Okay, this angle, just like a protractor, is what a clinometer essentially does. This is a clinometer. All right, if I'm a certain distance away from the launch pad, I can use this device, putting my eye over here, looking through it like a gun, and aiming it at the rocket. This little device slides around on here, kind of works like a protractor, but it's upside down, all right, giving me an angle. All right, so that's the baseline. 100, 200 feet, I mean, say if you're 500 feet away. It doesn't really matter how far away you are, but I need that number when I do my calculation, okay? And when we typically launch them in class, we put a group at 100 feet, a group at 200 feet, and occasionally put a person at 500 feet away and to see what they get for a reading when the rocket launches, okay? The tangent angular is the other thing that we're going to need. Obviously, this angle is one thing we can get. All right, and that's the angle formed between the person with the clinometer and the apogee of the rocket. Apogee is the highest point, okay? So when my rocket gets launched, the engine stops right here. It coasts for a little while, and hopefully it reaches apogee. <laughs> well, I know it will because gravity is going to keep it from going any higher, right? Then the ejection charge goes off, and then I can recover my rocket. So that's the point, hopefully, I can get a measurement for so this person down here, as I know where their baseline is, say it's 100 or 200 feet, they go ahead and they take a reading of where the apogee is, and then I have my angle, okay? The only time this pump becomes a real problem is when it really curves like this, and it may go over my head. I mean, if this were to curve right over the observer's head, I might get an angle of 90 degrees, and that's not going to be a very accurate reading, and I'll explain that in a second. So let me give you an example. I have observer one and two, okay? Here's my rocket, all right? I know that this guy here, he's ready with his device, and he's at 100 feet away. This guy, he's got his, it's 200 feet away. We launch the rocket, boom, and there it ends up. Let's just say that's the apogee. When it's there, these two people here are paying attention, and they go ahead and take readings. Let's just say that this reading here that this person has is 16 degrees. And that's what they're going to write down. They've read the, the meter. It says 16 degrees. What do you think? This one will be higher or lower than 16? Should be higher because the angle is greater here. Okay? So there's the angle. The slope is greater. Okay? And then let's just say that this one measures 30 degrees. All right? And at this point, they just write it down. 
and they bring it back into the classroom to crunch these numbers. I've got two numbers that I need, distance away and the angle. Simple enough, right? Here's the formula. I want to know that the baseline times the tangent angular, right now I just have the angle, equals the height of the rocket. So here's the fancy diagram, right? Looks familiar. I want this. All I do is multiply this and this together. However, the tangent angular, I have to convert that first. I have to convert my angle. So to convert that, I use that chart. So I use the table that's included. All right. And I'll show you how to use that. Here is the table. It's really easily set up. Angles from zero, and you can see, I don't know, even like 41 degrees is right here. And then it gives me a number I can turn it into. Look what happens at 90 degrees. If it's over my head at 90 degrees, it says it's infinitely high. It could be a billion miles away, and it would still be at 90 degrees. So that number is not going to help me necessarily. So if the rocket goes perfectly straight and I get a pretty good reading, I'll have a pretty good estimate of how high it is. All right. So let's take a look at these two observers. Observer number one. They were at 30 degrees, right? And here we find 30 on the chart, and it converts to 0.5773. And we can round up, all right? So 0.58 is reasonable, all right? So if I'm 100 feet away, this is my formula. I'm at 100 feet away times the 0.58, which I got from my chart. It gives me 58 feet. So observer number one says, hey, that rocket went 58 feet in the air. Let's ask observer number two what they found, right? Remember the angle? 16 degrees. So then we go over there. We look up 16 degrees on the chart. Here it is right here. And the number is 0.2867. And we can raise it to 0.29 if we want. Okay. So he's at 200 feet away, though. So his numbers are just a little bit different. He takes the 200 feet times 0.29. He comes up with 57.34 feet. 0.34 feet? Oh my gosh, that's like four inches. Okay, so we're pretty close. This one says 57 feet, four inches. This one says 58 feet. From that far away to be only eight inches off, that's incredible, quite frankly. All right, so we don't care that these numbers don't actually equal. All right, but we want to know that they're pretty close within a stone's throw. Okay. So that's how high that rocket went. Quite frankly, that's not very high at all. You, you guys are going to go a lot higher than that. So here are some examples. Um, the clinometer reading scope is 24 degrees. The baseline's 100 feet. How high did the rocket fly? So in each one of these, uh, I'll give you the answers here. So what I want you to do is pause it here, run these numbers, and then I'll show you the answer. And then you should keep pausing and playing and get through these answers. But try a couple on your own. Uh, if you want to watch the first one just as a, an example, you can do that too. But there's four all together. So I'll explain it. Uh, I'm going to take this 24 degrees, go find it on my chart. All right. It converts to 0.4452. Now all I do is take that and multiply it by what? 100. 100 feet away. So I can just move the decimal point two places. I should get 44 feet, 0.52, or about 44 and a half feet. You can round it up 45 feet if you want. So either way, that's about what it is. All right. So let me give you uh, the answers for number two, three, and four. Fifty feet. About seventy seven feet. About 597 feet or 598 feet. Does it really matter when it's almost 600 feet away? It doesn't. So that's the exact number we came up with 
but this is not an exact science because of the winds, who knows how, where we're standing, how well we can see, those kinds of things affect our calculations, okay? So the last thing I want to get to today is my tree in my yard. I want to know, I'm going to give you these pieces of information and I want your answer on the Google Doc and you can send it to me. Uh, let's just say I measured 47 degrees. So I'm standing right here. I measured 47 degrees and I am 75 feet away. So take those calculations. Uh, let me know if that tree blows over or if I cut it down, does it have a chance of actually hitting my house? Okay. Um, and if it does, don't, don't cut it down. All right. If you got any questions, just uh, ask me in Remind or in uh, Google Classroom and I'll help you out. Have fun with these. And if you got trees next door to your house, go ahead and figure out um, if you got a protractor, you can kind of figure out the angle of how high they are. See if you can kind of uh, calculate how high these things are. Even buildings, doesn't really matter what it is. So, all right. If you've got any questions, let me know. Have a good one. I'll see you guys later.